Hello and welcome to the CPU Galaxy channel and the video I wanted to do for long already, a fair comparison between the first Pentium CPU and the fastest Socket 3 CPU, the AMD 4086X5133. The first Pentium CPU, also called P1, was released in March 1993 and was the pioneer of the very successful story behind the Intel Pentium timeline. Due to the reach limit of clock speed, Intel had to create a CPU which should be much faster with much lower clock speed and from my point of view they did it very well. The Pentium comes up with 3.1 million transistors and it's the first of its kind called a superscalar processor. It has two instruction pipelines, 8KB of level 1 cache for data and additional 8KB of level 1 cache for program code. The P1 can shine with a very efficient cache organization with write-back algorithm and powerful integrated cache controllers. Yet the cache is divided into smaller caches which can get searched into more quickly. This technique is also called two-way set associative cache. The P1 has a 32-bit address bus and 64-bit data bus. This CPU was available with 60 and 66 MHz. But it was also very famous for heat problems and a floating point error on early versions. The one I'm using here for the benchmark is a very early version from calendar week 33, 1993, 8 weeks after the Pentium was released. Later versions had a thick gold heat spreader to reduce the heat cost unreliability. The AMD 4086X5133 was released in November 1995, two and a half years after the Intel Pentium and comes up with 1.6 million transistors, 33 MHz of external clock and a clock multiplier of 4 boosts this CPU to 133 MHz. With this speed and integrated 16 KB of level 1 cache, this CPU is a serious competitor to the first Pentium. Yeah, the one I'm using for the benchmarks has a full black laser engraving and is called 4086DX5133. There are also versions with the white printing and the naming just X5133. <laughs> Yeah, then let's have a closer look at the hardware we are going to use for this nice challenge. I wanted to keep it as fair as possible and therefore I will go for both main boards from the same manufacturer and the almost same chipset. For the Socket 3 platform, our AMD CPU now, we will use the ASUS PBI 4086 SP3 board. So this is a quite reliable and very powerful Socket 3 main board. It is supporting many different kinds of 4086 and Socket 3 chips as well the AMD X5133 CPU. Over here we have four ISA slots. We have one VESA local slot available, three PCI slots and two slots for EDU. 72 pin memory. Integrated also IDE controller, floppy controller and several um, peripheral connectors. The board is equipped with a SIS chipset and an award BIOS, the version 4.50G. We have over here 256 kilobytes of second level cache with a timing of 15 nanoseconds. On the other hand here for our Socket 4 platform we have the ASUS PCI P5SP4 mainboard. We have as well as the 4086 board a SIS chipset which makes the comparison even uh, more fair. Over here four ISA connectors, four PC PCI slots, integrated IDE controller and floppy controller and four 72-pin EDURAM slots. We have as well as on the 4086 board 256 kilobytes of second level cache with a timing of 15 nanoseconds same as on the 4086 board. We have also here a award BIOS and the same version with 4.50G. So this makes from my point of view this uh, challenge the really fairest one I have seen so far and I'm very curious about the results we will see later on. Yeah, what else do we need for our setups? Of course a video card. In this case I will go for both systems with the Hercules Dynamite 128. So this is uh, one of the fastest video cards you can get for any DOS uh, 
applications. It's equipped with 4 MB of MD RAM. Back in the days, actually, it was a very, very expensive uh, kind of uh, memory. And the ET6000 video chip from Zeng Lab. So this video card I can definitely recommend for any DOS-based machines. And for the memory, we will go for two 8 megabytes, uh, megabyte sticks with 60 nanoseconds of access time. And also for both uh, main boards, I will use this IDE to SD card adapter. So it's quite reliable, works fine and very fast. As I said already, these parts uh, the same for both systems to keep it as fair as possible to get an accurate result of both guys here and see which one is the faster one. Yeah, we have here a lot of nice vintage hardware which is ready to get built up now. Yeah, so then let's boot up our 486 and yes, yeah, so it's recognizing the AMD 5X86 P75 with 133 megahertz, about 16 megabytes of RAM and it's booting quite fast with our SD card reader. Yeah, with cache check we can nicely see here our authentic AMD 486 clocked at 133.3 megahertz. Here we have an overview about our memories, the level 1 cache with 16 kilobyte and the access time of 7.6 nanoseconds, the level 2 cache with 256 kilobytes with 16.9 nanoseconds. Remember we installed a 15 nanosecond second level cache. The effective RAM access time for writing is 61 nanoseconds. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, what I expected here and we can go on with our tests. Yeah, booting up the Pentium was also straightforward. The CPU is recognized here with 66 megahertz, Pentium S CPU and everything is working without any problems. Yeah, for the Pentium we can see here at cache check, Pentium clocked at 66.7 MHz. Um, and here our overview about the memories, level 1 cache with 8 KB, um, with an access time of 11.4 nanoseconds. So it's interesting, it's um, quite slower than on the AMD. The second level cache with 256 KB at 16 nanoseconds, so it's uh, same to the AMD. And the main memory speed, which is very interesting, we have a very effective RAM access time for writing with 183 nanoseconds. So this is a lot slower than on the AMD and I'm very curious about our testing results at the end. Yeah, it's time to start our benchmarks. And thanks to Phil's computer lab, we have this nice um, those benchmark back available. And we go on now with SpeedSwiss to get our first results. The Pentium shows up with a score of 49.33 and the AMD gives us here 49.9. So for the first part in our chart, the AMD is slightly ahead the Pentium. Yeah, next one is Doom, of course this game and reference for all those gamers. It looks there is almost no difference and of course Doom is very playable on both CPUs with a high frame rate. But I can see already that the AMD is again a bit ahead the Pentium. So let's see who will take the lead at the end. If you want to guess, just post a comment below which CPU will win the overall performance in this video. I'm very curious. And again, the AMD won this race and came up with a frame rate of 44.48. The Pentium close behind with 43.37. Yeah, it's almost a tie, but still, the AMD seems to perform better. 
The next benchmark is Quake and I'm very curious about the outcome. We can already see that the Pentium is significantly performing better here than the 4086. It seems that Quake can take more advantage of the Pentium technology here. Yardoom was released in 1993 and of course programmed to perform perfectly on a 4086 based system. And Quake was introduced in 1996, where we had already for three years the Pentium on the market, and so it's clear that Quake is also better able to use the Pentium technology. Yeah, the Pentium finished already and can shine with a frame rate of 18.2. Yeah, this is a very good result for a 66 MHz based platform. I think the maximum on a full overclocked 486 setup ever achieved were 17 frames with Quake. Yeah, so the AMD finished also now and is significantly behind with 13.7 frames per second. A 4.5 FPS difference is a lot and in this case the Pentium takes clearly the lead. PC player at 642-480 seems to be also slightly better on the Pentium and the result at the end is proving that. 8.9 for the Pentium and 7.7 .7 for the AMD. And to my surprise the Pentium takes again the lead after being behind with Speedsys and Doom. The next one is 3D Bench and also here the Pentium is ahead and scored 74.9 points. The AMD also slightly behind with a score of 69.3. For the last test I want to do a performance test just on the floating point unit. For this I'm using always Jackit, a nice software for some basic tests and having a FPU benchmark available. We will get a value called Wheatstones, in our case I will scale it to Mega Wheatstones and to my surprise the AMD takes again the lead with 23.9 the Pentium behind with a score of 21.6. So this is definitely something I did not expect, but it's indeed a very interesting result. If we add all together, the Pentium slightly won with 260 points after the AMD with 208. Well, it is almost a tie, but the Pentium seems to handle 3D DOS games much better than the AMD 486. Playing Duke Nukem 3D at 642-480 was also better and smoother on the Pentium. The FPS counter showed always some more frames and some FPS more can be already the difference of having fun with a game or getting frustrated. But for both platforms there are still possibilities to max them out. The X5 133 we could easily overclock to 160MHz and on the socket 4 mainboard we could go for an overdrive with 133 MHz, but this may be in a future video. Yeah, at the end both CPUs are from the technical and historical point of view very nice and interesting. The AMD X5, let's say it's, it's the last of its kind in a successful storyline of the 4086 family. On the other side the Pentium, the pioneer of a new concept, on the beginning of a successful Pentium storyline. I personally prefer a 486 setup, but mostly triggered from a memory back in the days when I got my first 486. I hope you liked the video and if so please subscribe below and don't forget to hit the notification bell that you don't want to miss any further content. Leave me a comment below for any feedback or if you have wishes for future videos. Thank you for watching, take care and see you next time.